Hello everyone, D. Alfred Ostrowski. In this recording, I'm going to be giving a quick demo slash tutorial of the use of Langchain API. In this example, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of how to use Langchain to perform an OpenAI ChatGPT query against a localized data source. So the major advantage here is that you can keep your private information on your local machine and leverage the power of the natural language processing to query that or any collection of data you can easily modify it to do that as well as well as integrate it with the open ai large language model so let's get started i'm assuming that you have nothing else in uh, Amazon account PPK key generated and some software to access it, such as PuTTY. So here I'm going to launch an instance. I only need a T2 free tier instance to do this. So I'm just going to click on Ubuntu and the, take the default server. And again, just select the T2 micro and scroll down and grab my latest PPK key that has been generated and launched that instance. Refresh to see it coming up and running. And here it is. And we have an IP. And from that, I can bring up a terminal. I'm going to be copying all my commands from the GitHub. So you could reference the GitHub with this recording and even follow along as you're watching this same fashion. So that's the advantage, right? You have to play around a lot of the administration that typically comes with just about any package, right? You're going to have to do something a little bit different than what you've seen on a prior resource. So I did a sudo app get update. That's usually a prerequisite to do any of the installs off the cloud. I just installed Python pip and I defaulted it with a yes to the prompt. Next, I'm gonna install OpenAI software package using a pip install and some associated prerequisites that Langchain wants once I install Langchain. This is prompting me to do a system restart. Again, I just tab down to the OK and I hit that and it will bring that back. Now I can install the OpenAI package and that's completed. When I use the Langchain, it prompts me for constants. So I'm gonna pre-install that as well as Chrome ADB and another package called tick token. I'm gonna install Langchain itself along with that. I have everything I need to do the example. Again, all of this is on my readme on the associated GitHub with this video. Now I'm gonna install Langchain itself. And I got one more tick token and we can get going here. In this example, I'm going to query a single text file. And I'm gonna grab that off of my GitHub account. And I'm just gonna cut paste it into a text file here. I'm gonna call it input.txt. And for this example, I'm doing something very simple. I took just some summarized news articles off the web. I just scraped a page of yahoo.com and it has just 
a mixed bag of different articles here. And I can do a query of some content that I know is available in this text file and something a little more generalized that isn't available demonstrating that I not only can query my private data source, but I'm also leveraging the large language model that's integrated with OpenAI API. So I set up my text file and now I can just start everything with the command prompt. Of course, you can load this in a Python file, but I'm just gonna bring up the, the command prompt because it's just very convenient to do that. So I'm gonna import some libraries here, OS, Sys, and Constants. And again, I'm just cut pasting from my GitHub. And I'm going to bring in the text loader module from Langchain. Next, I'm going to bring in the vector store index creator module as well. Now at this point, I'm gonna load in my API key. And where I got the API key from is the OpenAI package and I have the URL here. Now I've been paying the $20 a month. You may have to do it to support this functionality at a consistent level. I'm not sure exactly where they draw the line, but I do know if you're not getting the paid subscription, it's very hard to get consistent access here. So for this, I went to openai.com account API keys. I already have logged into my account. See, so I have a couple API keys here. I'm not gonna click on that to support best practice. Don't want that to be available on recording or expose that on either GitHub or in any kind of recorded material. So I'm gonna pause out. I'm gonna load it into a variable called API key, and we're gonna proceed from that. And you can see in the GitHub that I have that assignment. And again, I have blocked out my API key. So let me pause out for a second. I'm gonna cut paste my API key in and we'll... okay, I'm back and I've loaded in my API key and it should look exactly how I have it listed. Here I have it X'd out. I had API key as you see here and I generated that from the OpenAI account page. So now I'm gonna assign this into the hash environment. Of course, this isn't best practice. I'm just doing quick and dirty here. In most cases, you're gonna to want to put this into a .env file and make sure that it's in a git ignore. But here, we're just getting it up and running and showing how to get it started. And we're not too worried about that at this moment. So I can art immediately start to set up a query and reference my text document. I noticed in the file that I loaded and you can check yourself, there was a commentary about Elon Musk, some type of news article. So I'm gonna set up my query to reference that. Using the text loader to read in that file. And again, I'm starting my prompt, my command prompt from the same directory where I loaded input. If you're going to have a more sophisticated array of data input, you're gonna to have to con be concerned with your paths to make sure that you're loading in your file, or if you're gonna load more than one file, that is definitely available as well. However, I'm just gonna be doing a quick example here. So here I'm loading it in using the vector store index creator and assigning that to index. From that point, I can run a query based off the index with my query about Elon Musk. So here we go, I'll run the query, I'm printing it directly to the screen. So here, Elon Musk was in a news article related to his relationship with Amber Heard, whatever, okay. So it, it referenced that document using the chat GPT, my local document, that I didn't have to share with anyone, but yet I'm using the power of ChatGPT. Now 
I may want to integrate the data or in the same context, I want to reference the database, the training model that ChatGPT has. So I know that there wasn't a lot of background information in that input.txt document. So I'm going to modify my query. What company does Elon Musk lead? Okay, which it probably wouldn't have a lot of background on that. And the news article already assumes, obviously, if you look at the news, most people obviously know who Elon Musk is. So we can look at the query came back. So it came back. It's the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. And I can go even further than that. Maybe it did have it in the article listed as a CEO. So I can revise my query again. Just to have the confidence in knowing that I have both the large language model as well as my own private collection. Whoops. I have to make sure I don't have any indents because we're working with Python here, right? So I'm going to reset that again and do that query. How did he get wealthy? So a little more background on Elon Musk. So there you have it. Okay, we use Langchain to do a localized query against our own private data. There's a number of ways to do this, right? You can use plugins. You can upload data to ChatGPT. Many cases, you may have uh, private data that you're working with that you're concerned about sharing it with the cloud. And this is a nice compromise because I can use Langchain and reference the open AI API to both look at my private data and leverage that in conjunction with the large language model that is supported obviously from open AI. So hope this helps. Thanks for listening. As usual, everything is posted on the associated GitHub and take care. Talk to you soon. Thank you.